Thank you so much for joining us. Christy and I, we thought about the brand experiences that have been the most memorable to us, but not just memorable, but like creative. Jumps you, out. Jumps out, right? Yeah. And stuff that use different technology, different techniques, different uh, points that they're making throughout the entire experience. Yeah, the engagement is different perhaps, yeah. Yeah, it's not what you think. So we wanted to go ahead and kind of dissect them a little bit and yeah. talk about why. And maybe we'll follow that up with a brief conversation about creativity and how do you keep it going. So my creativity? Your creativity, my right. creativity, just creativity in general, I guess. We'll Sounds see great. where it goes. So. Um, I guess I'll go first. This that sounds time. good. So what I found was an ad uh, that's kind of a short film. It's meant to introduce this new perfume by Kenzo World, right? Mm, it is yes. this video. Did you see it? I did. It I was, did. It was trending yesterday. I clicked on it. I was like, I had to watch it like three times because <laughs> at first I was kind of scared, and then I was fascinated. Like, why? What are they trying to communicate? So this. This new perfume is Kenzo is, is is brought to you by Kenzo World. It features uh, an actress named Margaret O'Quayley. She was in Nice Guys, the movie Nice Guys, and this video is made by Spike Jones. Now this this video shows it starts out with this this uh, attractive young lady. She's sitting mm -hmm. in some kind of presentation, like an award ceremony in a hotel, and you can tell that she's just terribly bored. And yep. she walks out into the hall. She's sad, kind of mopey, brushes a tear away. And then this music starts happening and she starts. She's like, oh, weird. She starts like freaking <laughs> out, man. Like she can't control her body. And then she just goes throughout the hotel doing weird stuff, firing lasers from her fingers. Yep. Dancing ballet. And then it ends. In front with of her. a mirror, a yeah. lot of mirrors. A lot of mirrors. Really cool shots, though. Like yes. they, she was like running upstairs dancing and, I, and just how the camera followed her. It was really engaging, really cool. But it was just, it was weird. It, it was, was different. When I mean, you think of a, a fragrance, you think of soft and elegant and some, you know, woman heroine, and it's delicate. I mean, it's just the easiest way to put it. And then you see this, and you expect it to go in the same general area, and then it's like, bam! Yeah, it, totally unexpected, totally weird. In the comments, if you've seen the YouTube section, like people either love it or hate it or just, yep. you know, don't get it, right? And I think that's the whole point. It ends with her like jumping through an eye and then like mm -hmm. ending and like it ends. And kind of read up on it a little bit. And it was kind of like the anti perfume commercial, perfume mm -hmm. commercial, right? Cause, that's what I got from it too. Yeah, it was like a, a parody, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so why would they do that? Like why would, why would a perfume company uh, create this ad with a, with a well-known uh, director and make it so kind of absurd in a way. And I think it appeals to a certain type of people that don't want that 1950s golden era of Hollywood, Chanel. Chanel. We've all seen the obsession commercials, things yes. like that. And those are all equally as kind of like pointless. Like after you get done watching it, you're like, what was that? You yeah. know? Kind of like that Sarah Jessica Parker one I looked at this morning. Oh, I did not see it. But you, <laughs> you when you me mentioned this uh, this ad that I should see, I was like, okay, I'll go to Ad Freak, kind of Google it. And, I, and I'm like, all I see is this thing for Sarah Jessica Parker. Click it and it was definitely not what you were intending me to look for. <laughs> but, but this ad was, was, I think, directed towards a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And definitely the EDM in there kind yeah. of solidifies that whole thing. And you're like, ka, 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 ka. it was like a <laughs> lot of stuff. Was, you got to see it. Please go see it. I think links are below. It's, it's weird, um, but it's just uh, random music. Anyway, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, even though it was kind of weird. And uh, but I, I think this whole putting it outside the genre of normal perfume scent fragrances and creating a name by themselves, yep. um, labeling it as it is uh, upscale, however it is different, um, is, is actually very I think interesting for this this perfume. And I think it might be a good good choice given that the visibility and kind of like the, the the talk that's surrounding this all the chatter so yeah well i have a little bit of background for it oh, okay. all right so do you remember the fat boy slim video that had christopher walkins in it uh yes 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 all yes. right so he's in a lobby he ends up getting up dancing mm -hmm. around the inside of this building mm -hmm. goes up a hallway with mirrors mm -hmm. and then starts to fly similar to the woman mm -hmm. you know who produced or directed it who? Spike Jones. Same guy. Same guy. Oh my goodness. So, so <laughs> even we talk about creativity, it 
in, in some regards, you could say, like, is it really creative since he's kind of pulling out these old things? But then you turn it around to where we're going back to fragrance. Well, and yes, in that regards, it is really creative. It's creative that they took that idea from an old music video and now applying it to a complete different industry, which I think is really cool. And I think it's the fact that Spike Jones is like reinventing the whole look mm -hmm. is creative in its own regard. Mm -hmm. So, well, well, we'll. Uh We'll continue to see. I, I know that I'm following uh, Kenzo World now, like on Twitter and Instagram. It's mm -hmm. kind of interesting to see how they're placing all their other fragrances, and this seems to be a trend with them. So, we'll, we'll, have uh, you looked at their clothes? No, I haven't. They're different. They're that, so. Is it as different as the video? Oh, I think the video is normal. Compared <laughs> to the clothes. <laughs> Go take a look. Go take a look. Go Let us look. know what you think. All right. Well, that, that's mine. Uh, so what do you got? Okay. So everyone, I, at least I hope everyone, knows this awesome new phenomenon from uh, uh, Netflix, and it's called Stranger Things. It's an instant cult classic. Uh, you see it. Everything is ba based in 1983, middle nowhere, Indiana. And the, the show comes up. It's one of those sci-fi horror-ish mm -hmm. kind of shows. I mean, there's scary elements, and it is definitely a Stephen King feel, you know, as the words come together and the music and everything. It's just straight up 80s. What I think is really cool is, first of all, in regards to creativity, like we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, everything inside of this show seems legit 1980s. Like, everything. They, they talk about, uh, in one of the blogs I was reading, about how the, the wood paneling was mm -hmm. on point and like the rainbow colored uh, blinds in one of the, the characters rooms on point. It's, it's just really, really cool. But the even cooler thing about it is that they've created a three, uh, 3D, excuse me, <laughs> a virtual reality uh, segment. So where you can go ahead, get your phone. I think it's only good for um, Androids right now. You can't use it on my iPhone, uh, but you can go get your uh, Google Cardboard and have an actual 3D excuse me, virtual reality uh, experience with the program. And that's something that Netflix has not done yet. And it's, it's taken off. Uh, you can see on uh, a couple different uh, YouTube videos that how the uh, characters actually experienced the virtual reality. They had a simulated room set up to where the characters walked in and put on their uh, virtual reality headsets and we're actually like walking in this room and experiencing you know, what was actually being experienced in the television show. So it was really, really cool. Like I, I think I showed you the, the link where they had like the nodes on the, the phone and stuff. So like mm -hmm. when they r went to reach out for something, it was actually there. Mm -hmm. And so they got really freaked out. The video was really cool. And if you want to experience it for yourself, you know, as I said, you can go online and see it. Yeah, so. I saw this video uh, of, of people trying it out kind mm -hmm. of for the first time. And they were legitimately freaked out. Oh, yeah. They were walking around and, and they had like the sensors um, on, on the on the mask and also on their flashlight. Oh, and that's so it right. was actually that's right. like they were there kind of looking around. Exactly. And, and uh, so I thought it was interesting how you can use this VR capability to put people into an experience that is usually just, you know, in a different medium that isn't as interactive. And so I think that these things are, are, are really applicable for media in particular I get that's the obvious choice right you know you create a movie will create a a virtual experience about that movie and so how will businesses continue to adopt that and I think the more experiential you are as far as like maybe you invite people into your place of business and it's it's an experience like, like let's say that you're you have a museum mm -hmm. right and you're teaching them about World War two or some kind of battle or whatever you could show them like a uh, like a display of some kind, you know, and, and kind of show them artifacts. But I think VR would be really nice to just put it on and then be able to experience what it was like in that moment, much like what you're talking about yeah. there. You know, mm -hmm. you're transported automatically back to the 80s in this creepy scenario. And it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's, you and have to watch it. Yes. It, 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 I, I, saw that, I saw that video, I, and I tried to experience it myself, but it was like on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I had to like click and drag it, yeah. and it just, it wasn't scary. Yeah, but it's I not the same. I can imagine putting on the glasses and feeling like you're there with the music and the sound, it would be really nice. Yeah, so. for sure. And w another thing that I think is really cool is the Department of Energy has kind of gotten involved in playing along with them. So the part of the basis of this thing is that there is this monster that was created by the Department of Energy because of a parallel universe tear. 
okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's stretching it. I know, I know. But there's lots of those nerds out there that like it. But um, the uh, the department, the actual Department of Energy is like uh, here. They have a list, and it's Department of Energy does not explore parallel universes. Mm -hmm. They want to let you know that, but okay. they do invest in different types of technology so that we can improve our world. Mm -hmm. And they went through and different things they're doing. The Inter Department of Energy does not mess with monsters. Okay, good. They good clarified that. Yes. <laughs> they said, however, but we do have you know new technology such as mobile scanners that uh, detect radioactive material that is in uh, the big ships and stuff coming over with those um, what are those things called trailer things. Yeah. Container, like Conta yeah, container, container, yeah, cargo yeah. containers, okay. so that they, they can scan it. And then they talked about the National Laboratory scientists are not evil. <laughs> <laughs> they specify that. They have to specify yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because one of the, the antagonists in this uh, series was, you know, the head of uh, the National Laboratory. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and then they go through and they list about all these awesome scientists that they do have working there. And so they've taken a twist on the whole, like. Uh, theme, I guess, Stranger Things thing, and have utilized it to make marketing of their own. So it's taken this video and applied it to yeah, you know, yeah. exist in the DOE. Yeah, that I think that was really, really cool. creative. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they didn't take it negatively. Yes. They're just like, hey, all right, well, we're going to make this funny and actually educational at the same time. That's good. And I, get, I bet the, the show is getting more people to go to the site. Exactly. To I would have DOE. never yeah. would have known any of this stuff, you know, had all, all this access if I hadn't, you know, if they hadn't reacted in such a great way. Cool. Cool, right on. Well, I have uh, one more okay. for you. Shoot. It is uh, Hennessy Whiskey. Okay. All right. I'm not a big uh, whiskey drinker, you know, or cognac or, or whatever, but, but I do know. <laughs> I do know that uh, when I saw this this site, it, it was it was announced probably back in June. I think it was June, July. Um, but Hennessy created this this kind of this this site that was an entire auditorial uh, auditory and visual experience, and they integrated they they integrated sound like how things sound and move, and then they built an entire site around that, and they used a uh, technology called lidar. Mm -hmm. Which is similar to radar, but in, in, in sonar, it like detects objects, but it, it helps digitize it a little bit better. So so it sends out these beams, and it, it was able to like map maps out, it out, okay. map out an entire room, and you can kind of go through it. And it's really cool. It promotes the VOSP Privilege brand, which is kind of cool, and it's it's all centered around this theme called Harmony. And I got it right here. Uh, <laughs> ha uh, Harmony mastered from chaos. And it's trying to elevate the brand, um, kind of show people that this is much more than just a lifestyle drink that you use and you consume whenever you're around friends, but kind of go into the story of the the, the testing, the mm. the why, the the, uh, the, uh, the committee that surrounds this beverage that that actually has traditions and standards, and kind of keep it there. So it's presenting a lot of functional information into the site, but they created a site that communicates that functional information and without boring people. It created an entire experience. So not only do making you, depth, making depth, making I get it. making um, an interesting, m making what could be considered a rather boring, very very interesting, while supporting the brand. So as you move through the site, you kind of want to go to the next level because it's okay. so interesting. And I would recommend going to that site, kind of experiencing it for yourself. But I thought it was a really cool uh, integration of like lidar, sound, visuals, and also functional information mm -hmm. uh, to promote. And solidify this brand around a very uh, uh, around a very cohesive idea of mastering um, uh, mastering from chaos. Cool. So it's very cool. That is very cool. Go check it out. And talking about creative websites, going to kind of make a little segue here. Okay, that works. Ferrari Group has a new website. Yes, we do. We're, it looks great too. We're, we're very excited about <laughs> it. We put it up uh, last week. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't had a chance, please go to FerrariGroup.com. Also, if you're in the Hampton Roads area. Please don't forget about Morning Blend. Uh, we've got one coming up next week. Yes. And we hope to see you there. It starts 7 a.m. Breakfast is included. We have a great speaker. And just remember, first what, first Wednesday of every month. First Wednesday of every month. Well, uh, I think that wraps it up for this rundown this yep. week. Uh, of course, as always, if you have any uh, topics that you would like us to cover, please hit us up on Twitter. Also, remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And until next week, I'm Scott. And I'm Christy. And see you later.